There have been some pretty cool weapons in sci-fi films. Star Trek phasers can turn you into vapor. The noisy cricket from Men in Black is small, but it's quite mighty. The six stick from Kick-Ass, it, it makes you shit pants, basically. It's, it's, it's a weapon still, it's still a weapon. There's a lot of crazy weapons out there, but with the Pentagon releasing footage of all these unidentified aerial phenomena, you gotta wonder if the Pentagon has any of these crazy weapons that they're working on in their little lab, in their basement. Like say, I don't know, the pain ray? I'm Taylor McWaters, and today on Life's Biggest Questions, we gotta ask, what the f is up with the Pentagon's pain ray? Is this a real thing? Yes, it's very real. Let's talk about it. First of all, the name alone, the pain ray, sounds like a bit much. It sounds like something Dr. Evil would create. Like, it's very intimidating. It's also referred to as the heat ray, which is it's better. It's definitely better. I don't know. But the scientific term for it is active denial system. It was tested back in 2007 in Georgia at the Moody Air Base and was deployed in 2010 I'm out of air. I was like, no, I didn't see any comma. I'm like, no way. Like, Taylor run on sentence McWaters. I'm like, okay, here we go. I'll figure it out. Taylor from the past, fucking dick. It was tested first back in 2007 in Georgia at the Moody Air Base and was deployed in 2010 with the United States military in the Afghanistan war. But it was never actually used. Why? Why not? What is this thing? The active denial system is the first non-lethal directed energy system that has a greater range than small firearms. It goes quite far and it projects a focus beam of radio waves at a frequency of 95 gigahertz. So the pain ray provides a quick and reversible skin surface heating sensation. It doesn't penetrate your skin, although it sounds like it definitely would. The heat ray or the pain ray, you're like, no, I don't want that, thank you. You won't know it's coming either. Just your chest and your neck will suddenly start to burn. It doesn't make a sound. There's no visible laser. You're not gonna hear like a You're never gonna know what hit you, essentially, which is terrifying. Now, the pain ray is built by a company called Raytheon. They were the same guys that created the first ever microwave back in 1947. Good stuff. It was much larger than our average cooker today. It stood at almost two meters tall and it cost five grand back in the day, which today is more like 52,000. It was massive and expensive. Imagine paying 52 grand for Hot Pockets. I'd do it. They're so good. They're so good. So this company discovered how to make a microwave and then they stayed in the weapon lane. They were like, hmm, baked goods or missiles. As of 2015, Raytheon was the third largest defense contractor in the United States. Raytheon built Tomahawks, the Javelin weapon system, ram-guided missile systems, everything loud. All the loud shit they built, basically. Now, the idea that the Pentagon has secret weapons like this, like this big microwave heat chest ray just chilling out in a basement somewhere, it can be kind of worrisome. I get it. Donald Trump has hinted at some of these crazy weapons in the past before, although he probably shouldn't have. On December 19th, 2019, Trump mentioned the F-35. It was meant for stealth use. But he also continued saying that these pilots were better looking than Tom Cruise. And I went up to the pilots, and honestly, they're better looking than Tom Cruise, okay? So we have advanced aircraft, and the pilots are hot? We're due. That's it. Bye. That's it. So I'm gonna do another lap. They're hot and they're flying. Great. So these new jets are supposed to be invisible almost. He was kind of hinting that they were so stealthy you would never see them. Okay, thanks for the tidbit. We probably shouldn't have known that, but thank you. So we have advanced aircraft and the pilots are hot. Great. We're doomed. We're fucked. We're doomed. So maybe Tom Cruise is actually the hot pilot for these mysterious UFOs lately. We don't know. Maybe it's Tom Cruise and his whole stunt team department. Spencer Ackerman, a reporter from Wired, willingly got blasted by this pain ray back in 2012. And it's one of the weirdest videos I've ever seen. It almost looks fake. Check this out. Okay. It's hot. It looks like he's trying to avoid a bee. Like he's doing the there's a bee run. He's not doing the military pain ray aimed at your chest run. He's doing the... If it was the Pentagon firing a heat ray, I feel like it would be way more intense than that. But this is where they're at. This is where science and technology is at. They also tested the pain ray on a group of volunteers. They had this fake mob just slowly approach a base. There's like 15 of them and they're like throwing things. They got their tiki torches, whatever you use for your riots, idiots. And they're slowly getting closer. And also, side note, in this video, the one guy in the front should get paid double after this gig. This dude catches the thing and then immediately hucks it back at the mob. 
Like, right bumper, R1, R1. He was so good, see ya. It's a great move, I'll admit, but the house always wins. Apparently, it feels like you're walking into an open oven. And now, even after its many years of development and tens of millions of dollars, the military has not used the pain ray in anger, just for a group of casual volunteers with a mean right arm. That's suspicious. Active denial system supporters think that this weapon will actually save lives. They believe that blasting people and heating their skin up to 44 degrees is one of the better ways to deter a crowd. Okay, sure. So your skin won't actually start to burn until 51 degrees. But like, that's pretty close. That's a few clicks away from a Palm Springs sunburn, you know? Like, all it takes is for some guy to be like, seven? Wait, five or seven? Ooh, shit, sorry. When in reality, you just need to stop a prison riot. You don't need to blast somebody's chest or plate on fire. You don't need that. Less than 1% of volunteers received these pea-sized blisters after the pain ray was used. So we're not there yet. I say yet, I don't really know if I want this thing to ever be there, honestly. I don't want this thing to be used towards anybody. I'd much rather the LRAD, if anything, the long-range acoustic device. This seems better. I mean, it's still inhumane and scary, but less heat, I don't know. The words microwave and aimed, it, intimidating words. Those are some intimidating words to hear. I'm all set. The LRAD is a sound cannon. Audio producer Corey Choi was at the 2014 Black Lives Matter protest in New York when all of a sudden he felt horrible, nauseating pain. He realized soon after it was sound that was causing this discomfort. Your body just goes into panic mode, he says. The pain is so specific. It's the sound equivalent of looking into the sun, which is an insane thing to think about. He had to run away, but he also had no idea where this thing was even coming from, so he picked a random direction and hoped for the best. Now, the people that were in line of fire didn't even get the chance to run. Their body couldn't even get that far. They just collapsed. They couldn't even figure out what was happening to them. Their body just shut down. That's way too much. No human being should have to experience that at any point. Prison rides or whatever. It's like you can't blast people with heat or sound. It's just leave that out. So on one of these modes, the sound cannon can amplify your voice really loud, which works. That's how you do most things. Just have a dude screaming as loud as he can and yelling at you. That would make me run away 10 times out of 10. The second mode is the deterrent mode, where it can project sound so loud that you have permanent hearing loss. All these are horrible, honestly. Like, unless you're fighting the Incredible Hulk, I, I don't think you need these weapons. They say the purpose of the LRAD system is to provide unparalleled, long-range communication and safe, scalable, non-kinetic escalation of force. That's a fancy way of saying, hey, don't protest or we're gonna blow your fucking eardrums off. That's a nice way of saying that. Instead of the Pentagon making a pain ray, they should just make, like, I don't know, a sleep ray. Yeah, blast your enemies into REM. That'll do the trick. Or a sad ray. Bum them out until they're no longer in the mood for a prison riot. Just make everybody watch the scene from Rugrats where Tommy feels like his parents don't love him anymore. Sweet as apple pies. Now it is time for bed. Make them watch that. that that's going to do it. Before I leave and go cry, thank you so much for joining us on Life's Biggest Questions. I've been your host, Taylor McWaters, and we'll see you next week on What the F*** Wednesday. Leave some suggestions down below what you want to hear us ramble about. You guys are the best. Stay safe. Thank you. Bye.